one of the finest entities of its kind in our county. I don't say that because we've enjoyed a great relationship with the chamber <coughs> for many years, but it just happens to be one of the most enduring entities of its kind in the region. And of course, last but not least, I really want to extend my gratitude and appreciation to my publicist and the publicist from Madonna Gardens, Wendy Brickman, for introducing me to my <laughs> So without further ado, I'm going to sit down because I need to manipulate this slideshow accordingly. This reminds me of the fireside chats we used to have in the 40s. <laughs> so to begin, I'd like to take you to the very heart of, uh, well, really the <laughs> oldest house in the Salinas Valley, which is the host. Oh. Uh, can I take the mask off? Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wonderful. <clears throat> That's a relief to me. So the Jose Eusebio Baranda adobe is the oldest adobe in the Salinas Valley. It was constructed in the Mexican Republic era in 1844. Uh, uh, Mexican, uh, Monterey colonial architecture, as it were. And so the Historical Society just celebrated its 50th anniversary of being custodians of the Sadovi and Five Acres. This is our campus. Let me please ask you, how many of you have been out to see us? Oh, very good. Excellent. Very good. Well, I do, I really would like to have uh, the chamber come out and have a special event with us, be our guests, take a comprehensive tour. Images don't do justice, but anyway. So you see, we have several historical features on site. Uh, before I time travel, you have, I've spent a great deal of time and thought in putting something together for you very special relating to the history of our valley. So, but I want all of you to understand where that history is being preserved. One of these features is a monument that we dedicated in April of 2006 uh, to those who served in the Bataan uh, Death March in the Philippines in World War II. 1897 Lagunita Schoolhouse, which John Steinbeck actually teaches about in his book, The Red Pony. This was relocated to the site after being nearly demolished. And in 2013, I was able to completely renovate the ex exhibits in there, reflecting an authentic schoolroom interior, circa 1900. Another, uh, this is a beautiful Victorian example uh, created by William Weeks, who had an office in town. He was one of the finest architects of his time in the latter part of the 19th century, early part of the 20th century. This was on the corner of Soledad and John Street. It was going to be demolished, but then we had it relocated and it is presently being restored. No, we have all of the crystal, the art, the silver, the china to appoint it uh, in style, high Victorian style, circa 1900. Another part of, in the works uh, celebrating the agriculture of the Salinas Valley is to develop uh, historical heirloom botanical gardens. <clears throat> Including utilizing certain uh, exterior architectural resources saved from buildings that have been long demolished, including our own Hotel Caminos, which is now where Mr. Taylor's building is located. Also in the works, we do have uh, the region's largest collection of Native uh, First Peoples uh, material culture. Uh, we're talking about mortars and pestles, uh, bone beads, uh, bird whistles, the whole nine yards. 
that we will be actually creating a 2200 square foot museum devoted to the first peoples of the region, celebrating human occupation here for over 10,000 years. We have the, some of you may have heard this name in the past, Gary Berschini or Trudy Haversack. They were really the preeminent archeologists of the region. Uh, he's passed, but Gary, uh, but Trudy is still here, and we have over 800 lineal feet of materials uh, collected through excavation uh, over the last 50 years. Part of the structure will include a round room with a planetarium and 22,000 square feet of ethnobotanical gardens, particularly focusing on the uh, medicinal or ethnobotanical medicinal traditions of healing in the region. I must, I must note really quickly before I take you on uh, this little time travel journey that I've created of our various cities in, the, uh, in our valley, uh, the fact that as it is now, we have 82,000 children in our region that have to travel far and wide in order to visit uh, and fulfill their curriculum standards associated with being educated on Native American uh, First Peoples. So again, what we're, what we'll be building will satisfy that need. This is our uh, museum. At this point, future museum, we build as we can afford it. And we have uh, the archaeological repository and two uh, archival repositories in there. But presently, part of the building is being uh, utilized as large artifact storage, including this buggy used by the first female doctor of Southern Monterey County. Six, six feet, this is six feet in height. This is a coffee mill from 1873. Now, I wanna uh, talk to you a little bit about our archival vaults, where documents we have, dating all the way back to 1770, reside. Just a few important record series include the real property assessment rules from 1850 to 1890, an exceedingly important collection of natural, naturalization records. A society is uh, the custodian of certain records for the superior court, both civil and, division, civil and criminal divisions. We also have every single civil and criminal court case file from 1850 to 1912. Certain interesting artifacts like this 1804 bottle of Napoleon brandy. Wow. This is our second vault. Bear in mind, both of these vaults are temperature and humidity controlled with dry water suppression systems. And of course, every single museum needs a, an appropriate library and reading room. So we're in the process of developing a Victorian library from the 1880s, uh, integrating numerous interior architectural elements that we rescued from the Jesse D. Carr mansion here in town in 1965. So these materials have been resting in a warehouse since then. And the idea, again, is to time travel you back to the 1880s. It actually will be one of the finest uh, libraries of its kind in the region once it's completed. Chandelier, it'll be center of the room. Also, certain amazing uh, materials, for example, this particular specimen right here came from 216 Main Street. I had it completely restored it's from 1905. And when this, build, uh, when this uh, window was constructed, it was constructed for a place called the Grand Saloon. Now, 
How are, how is any given museum or historical society truly able to, you know, responsibly uh, tell a story about a town, uh, a valley, an entire region? Well, it's by major collections. So as the grandparent historical institution of the region uh, being founded, December, this will be, uh, December will be 90 years, 90 years of collecting, including our most recent major acquisition of the Pat Hathaway collection. Some of you might have, uh, you may have heard of our, the acquisition of that collection. It was one of the largest privately held uh, uh, photograph collections in existence in, in the state, on the entire West Coast. It was at peril of leaving our, uh, leaving our county, but we worked very hard to save it. Artifacts as well. And Hathaway was an amazing photographer in, in himself, uh, 50 years of photography, 500,000 images uh, celebrating uh, the development of industry and commerce not only in the Monterey Peninsula, but in the Salinas Valley as well. For example, here is the ribbon cutting day of the Monterey Bay Aquarium, 1984. Pivotal moment, I think, for us here in this region because it did very much open the floodgates to modern day tourism as we know it. Also a collector of ephemera and books dating back to the 1840s. Now, we're going to start our little time travel journey. So the following imagery that, I'm, that I've included in this presentation um, celebrates the development and evolution of not only our town, but all of the other towns in our valley. So from here on forward, I I will be simply giving you a photographic essay explaining to you what you're seeing. This right here, you're looking at, so, so the old Jim Barton Hospital, which is at the very top of that, that's the corner of East San Luis and Main Street. This hand-colored image shows Main Street right about the year of 1905. It would only be a couple of years later that our Chamber of Commerce was founded. So when our Chamber of Commerce was founded, this is what the founders would have seen. And these are the merchants that would have supported the Chamber. Here's another image. This is uh, south of Gavilan Street, circa 1905. This is an amazing image showing Main Street, 1929. Now that was, you can see the difference between what we looked like in 1905 and what we looked like in 29. Now keep in mind an interesting fact is 1929, Salinas was the wealthiest town per capita in the world. I mean, in the nation, sorry, not the world, the nation. Yeah. <clears throat> Throughout the early 30s as well, when a third of the nation was out of work and many businesses were going under, Salinas enjoyed a high degree of quality of life and success. Now, moving, moving along to our neighbor, uh, Spreckles. So again, industry and commerce, which historically industry and commerce between uh, Spreckles and Salinas was very, very close. Also, uh, bringing economic prosperity to our region, Spreckles Sugar Factory being the largest factory of its kind in the world. And it also changed modern ir uh, irrigation uh, methods as we know it. And then of course, people started experimenting with things like lettuce, cauliflower, broccoli, and here we are these days. 
Here's another view, 1907. <clears throat> I won't dwell on this too long. This is 1914. It shows you that uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same. We were experiencing a very intense flooding year that year. And, well, anyway, uh, I don't think we'll end up quite as bad as that. Now, I wanted to move you along to Chular. It's a vastly different town than what it was 100 years ago, and enjoyed it. Here, here's the train station itself. Here's the school in Casterville. I mean, Castorville, pardon me, Chular. I want to take you to my fair city where I live, Gonzales. This is 4th Street. I don't know how many of you have been to 4th Street recently, but 100 years ago, well, actually, a couple of those buildings still exist. Here's Alta Avenue in Gonzales. Another, I, I should just, I should also say we had uh, the evaporation process, milk evaporation process that we know it, was really invented here in this valley. And that ended up saving a lot of people's lives, particularly during and after world wars. And we had, we had um, an establishment here in town, and we also had one in Gonzales, Alpine. Maybe some of you have heard of it. This Mission Soledad. Again, these are all images circa 1900, 1910, with a few exceptions. Subsequently restored in the 30s. Here's Soledad, train station, circa 1910. Here's Front Street in Soledad. Soledad River Bridge, 1908. Here's Paraiso Springs, or properly pronounced Paraiso Springs, in the height of its heyday, circa 1900. Here's the plunge at the springs. Our own Pinnacles National Monument. This is Moses Spring down at Pinnacles. And the green field. This is the most modern image I've provided, circa 1945. But many of those buildings are still there and are in good repair, I might add. And now here on the King City, circa 1890, Broadway Avenue. Here's the grammar school, circa 1890. Broadway again. And here's King City in 1945. So I specifically made an effort to show you one of the earliest image, <clears throat> images in existence, and then something about 45 years later. So the, one of the principal reasons why I wanted to take you on a journey of, of our various towns in this county, I mean, in, in our valley, is the fact that uh, even a hundred years ago, uh, 
these various towns, their prosperity on so many different levels and aspects was all very interwoven and intertwined with Salinas. And again, Salinas was considered to be the big city. Sure, it was a little bit more difficult to travel in those days. But again, on so many different levels, particularly when it comes to industry and commerce and distribution, uh, that was, um, Salinas all played a, a major role in that. And, you know, it, it really does uh, show how interconnected uh, industry and commerce and our own communities, just as, as human beings and trying to, you know, enrich culture and arts here in our valley, how interdependent everything is. And, you know, again, there needs to, to really uh, come forth an effort to where our cities can be more close, again, on the various levels that they used to be. I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not saying that we've drifted apart, but what I am saying is we can do better. And so that, again, this is where, you know, industry and commerce comes into play, particularly when it comes to supporting new business owners and cultural and historical art programs. And so uh, I think finally, uh, you know, with Madonna Gardens, when, when you think about the history of Madonna Gardens, it is truly an amazing institution in itself, having been uh, first founded by the uh, Catholic Daughters of America, the original concept being founded in 1950. But it wasn't until 1966, Madonna Manor, that's how it started off. It wasn't until September 1966 that uh, the, uh, the daughter's vision came into reality. And so uh, started off again as Madonna Manor. And then finally, uh, it was purchased and transformed greatly into the wonderful place that it is today was purchased in 2016. And just taking a little tour of the place myself, I am extremely pleased and proud to have Madonna Gardens in our community. And now I will open up to questions. Questions? So the, the Adobe, uh, what are your hours for the public? Tuesdays through Fridays from 9 to 3. And also we plan on opening up uh, once every, uh, a Saturday every month, once the weather gets better. Yes. And tours are, 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 usual, are by appointment usually. Just give me a call in advance. Yes, sir. And where is it? Uh, we're on Veranda Road, with the intersection on that is Calle del Adobe, or otherwise known as the Laurel Drive Extension. So, uh, north, hmm. north, north Davis, off of North Davis. Uh, it's a hidden gem. It's, uh, yeah. Up that way. Up any other questions? Yes. When will that museum that you're building um, be completed? Thank you. Uh, we are not funded by any governmental uh, entity whatsoever. Uh, and brick and mortar grants are just exceedingly difficult to find. So the Bronda Adobe campus mm -hmm. has always been a community project. And it will be finished and built out at the will of the community. So I wish I could prognosticate or, or uh, you know, give you an idea of when we might complete. But again, that's all by the will of all of you. Yes. We should have a Miranda out there every year back in the 80s. Are you going to be doing anything like that again? Soon? Did you know we had our, our barbecue in 2022, uh, and you know that was on September the 18th. And the weather was anomalous that day, it, uh, the wind and the rain. But despite that, we had 20, uh, we had about 200 people. 
and we just had an open house celebrating our 50th anniversary of the of the acquisition of the Adobe, and we're going to turn around and have another open house in uh, March celebrating the 50th an anniversary of the Adobe being placed on the National Register of Historical Places. And so we plan on having another merienda uh, in we're still trying to figure out, based upon our little experience that we had in September, we're thinking uh, perhaps moving it up to August at this point. Yes. Where might we see more of the Pat Hathaway collection? Oh yeah, oh thank you very much. So our commitment uh, is to have, eventually have all of that, all of those images digitized and accessible for everyone to view and a lot right now. So we have approximately 30,000 images that have been digitized. And eventually all of that will go online. So we're always looking for volunteers mm -hmm. as well. But in March, you'll have an exhibit? Thank you, yes. <laughs> so, thank you, Wendy. So, so uh, Wendy, uh, bless her heart, found that the Historical Society a sponsor to uh, provide the rental fee for the Pacific Grove Arts Center where the Historical Society between March the 3rd and April the 27th will have an exhibit relating to Mr. Hathaway's collection, uh, his, his historical collection, the collection he developed in his own amazing right as a photographer and artifacts and whatnot. Mm -hmm. so, We'll, you'll be seeing more of that in uh, in the news, but in Wendy Brickman's uh, newsletter as well. Any 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 other questions? Yes. Um, the Rancho Los Coches in Soledad. Mm. Do you have any news about that? <sighs> <laughs> Still. Well. <clears throat> The city owns it. I'll just be peripheral uh, on this. My uh, my present understanding is that the city owns it, and they received a proposal from a local businessman, and they're considering it. But in the meanwhile, uh, I think that was about two, three years ago. But in the meanwhile, nothing has been done, and so <coughs> I won't go as far to say as it's borderlines on, I'll just, you know, I, I won't say that it borderlines on demolition by neglect, but uh, I think that as time goes on, uh, when it comes to these various important historical sites, municipalities, communities, entire governmental um, entities, as it were, will really need to take responsibility for uh, historical preservation because we have lost a lot. We still have much, but we have lost a lot. So that's a conversation. I think that uh, with Monterey, what I tried, to, what I inaugurated in 2014 was to bring as many historical and cultural institutions together as I could as a family to develop collaborative community partnerships. Then, the next step is to take this group and start collaborating with governmental entities in the hopes that we can take a more assertive stance on historical preservation as time moves on. Yes. What's involved in archiving as far as temperature and more? Oh dear, I won't keep you here for another <laughs> six hours if you get me on that. That's a whole other tutorial. Uh, it's involved, it, it, it takes a passion uh, for it because uh, a lot of, a lot of, well, unfortunately, quite a few interns that we will receive, they come to the understanding within the first month or two that museum work is not at all the glamorous work that they think it to be. Uh, it's gritty, it's detailed, it's involved and it's constant. It's something that never ends. I will always be behind, as it were. Even, you know, who knows how many more volunteers the Historical Society will receive. Uh, again, we wouldn't come as far as we have today 
were it not for 90 years of volunteers. But, you know, again, it's, it's an exceedingly large collection, and it's a complicated collection. But again, it's a collection that it's one of the finest collections of its kind on the entire West Coast, given the fact that government as we know it here in this region from 1770 through Monterey being the first capital was right here in this region. And we have all of the documents dating back to the time period for that, so. Yes? I'm curious how big your staff is and how big your board is and whether or not you receive most of your funding through grants. So the staff is yours truly. <laughs> so, so I am I am curator, and I am director. I have a board of twelve, and we are now looking for those two uh, staff subcommittees as well. Our total volunteer core of twenty, not all the time, and particularly during the whole COVID era. It was just exceedingly difficult, but we may do. And in an era where many institutions like ours were closing our doors, either temporarily or for good, this institution has really thrived. That's, again, because of volunteers and people who care. So as far as operations are concerned, we're very Spartan. We've always been very, very Spartan. Uh, with regard to salary, uh, watching our expenditures, the whole nine yards. It's a cumulative experience that adds up over time. So grants have been difficult. We've received some, but the pool continues to become larger and needier, as it were. So uh, what will that look like? for cultural or historical institutions as time goes on, three, five, seven, ten years, that remains to, yet to be seen. But as I stated before, uh, with regard to the build-out, uh, 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 you know, the, the true build-out of the campus itself will, will continue to require additional volunteers, Everyone has their own set of gifts and talents, and it's not just writing the Historical Society a check. It's using your talents and whatever it might be to continue building the institution out. Uh, any, any, any other questions? Is Trudy still involved? She is, yes. She's, she's on our board of directors. I hope I've made it worth your while today. Yeah. I'm going to. We'll work on having something out of the Historical Society soon. Jake, I have a feeling that Lenny will get lunch and relax here for a while. Well, thank you so much for this very informative presentation. Another round of applause for our guest speaker, everybody. We're just so glad that you could present to us. And also, on behalf of the Salinas Black Chamber of Commerce, we want to extend our gratitude and gift you some chocolates. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> you know I can't keep these in my house. <laughs> this package will be gone by the weekend. So. The and weekend. we would also like to give some chocolates Tomorrow. to the Madonna Gardens team and Cynthia. Thank you so much. And before we wrap up, I do have a couple of different announcements. We have a lot of great events coming up this week. We have a ribbon cutting with Santa Cruz County Bank that's taking place on Thursday, January 19th at 5 p.m. And we have another ribbon cutting on January 21st from 12 to 3 p.m. with Edward Jones Investments, and we would love to see you all there. Um, for more information, please uh, take a look at our website um, on www.salinaschamber.com. And we also have our upcoming events list on the table outside. But thank you so much, everybody, for coming and joining us here today. And I believe there are some snacks and sandwiches still available, so you're welcome to grab some more. And there's some dessert out back there. I see some cookies and some cupcakes, so please enjoy. Thank you so much for coming once again. 
A big round of applause for Madonna Gardens and the